From trying to take a selfie with a snake to playing with firearms, here are some deaths that were totally avoidable and completely unnecessary. Snake Selfie In 2022, the Times of India reported that a 26-year-old man from Uttar Pradesh died after attempting to take a selfie with a venomous snake. The man was checking out a local festival when he came across a snake charmer. Hoping to get a selfie with the snake, the 26-year-old grabbed the serpent and put it around his neck. But things didn't go the way he'd hoped because the snake bit the man's left hand, causing him to have multiple seizures. Not long after that, the man fell unconscious. The snake charmer told the man's family that the reptile was non-venomous. He also provided them with medicinal herbs to stop the swelling in the man's hand. However, the charmer must have been mistaken because the man passed away at a medical center where he was being treated. How can you be a snake charmer and not know if your snake is venomous or not? There are a reported 5 million snake bites per year, and according to the World Health Organization, between the years 2000 and 2019, more than 1.2 million people in India died from snake bites. And now for a quick break because it's shoutout time! I want to give a huge thank you to Mark Mew 4 p and Paper Girl. Thanks so much for watching and supporting Origins Explained. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe and join the family! Clement L. Vallandigham Clement L. Vallandigham was a controversial politician during the 1800s. He was from Ohio and a member of the U.S. House of Representatives. Vallandigham was a member of the Democratic Party, and during the Civil War, he was sympathetic to the South. He spoke out against the war and said it was being fought only to bring profit to the Eastern elites. Vallandigham was also an outspoken critic of President Abraham Lincoln. In 1863, Clement gave a speech in his home state speaking out against the government and the war, making him one of the most hated men in the North. He was then arrested in May of that same year and found guilty of treason. After that, he was sent to jail, but he was released shortly thereafter by President Lincoln himself, only to be exiled to the South. He then found his way to Canada and stuck back into Ohio in 1864. After the Civil War, Clement became a lawyer. He ended up as the lawyer in defense of a man named Thomas McGeehan. McGeehan was arrested in 1871 for the shooting of Thomas Myers. A fight during a card game left Myers dead, and many believed the culprit was McGeehan. During the trial, Vallandigham was staying at a hotel and decided to test out a pistol just like Myers had on the night of the incident in order to prove, once and for all, that he accidentally shot himself, which would make McGeehan innocent of the crime. But not long after he practiced, Vallandigham was given the real gun owned by Myers. He then allegedly placed the gun he already had next to Myers' firearm. It wasn't long before a visitor showed up at the Vallandigham's hotel room wanting to speak with him. And Vallandigham, wanting to prove that Myers shot himself, told the guest that he would go over his plan for court. Clement would test his theory with the gun in front of the judge and jury, but he wanted to show the visitor first. However, when he prepared to demonstrate, he forgot to check the weapon's chamber and had no idea it was loaded. He then pointed the muzzle of the gun against his stomach and pulled the trigger. The witness to his death quoted Vallandigham's last words as being, I have foolishly shot myself. Then he died from the gunshot wound. Tico Brahe Tico Brahe lived from 1546 to 1601, and his work in astronomy was amazing because he made the most accurate celestial observations of his time. But how important was his work? Without a telescope, he was able to study the solar system and accurately identify the position of more than 777 stars. Brahe was a math student and something of a wild child. When he was 20 years old, he challenged a fellow university student, who was also his cousin, to a duel. But why? It started over a dispute about who was the better student. Things didn't go well during the duel, and Brahe lost a major chunk of his nose. He was then required to wear a prosthetic for the rest of his life. Brahe lived an interesting life dedicated to astronomy and mathematics. However, his death has been an interesting footnote in history. 
He attended a banquet in his 50s and was drinking heavily. Brahe needed to use the restroom, but rules at the time forbade guests from excusing themselves before the host. So it was believed that Brahe died a few days after the banquet due to a bladder infection that led to uremia, a dangerous condition linked to the kidneys. However, his remains were exhumed and studied, leading more modern researchers to suspect that Brahe may have died from complications from a lifetime of binge drinking mixed with undiagnosed diabetes. What would be the worst way to go in your opinion? Let me know in the comments below. And while you're at it, be sure to subscribe. The Oko Selfie The Oko Towers in Moscow are skyscrapers that were built during the 2010s. The South Tower, which was completed in 2015, is the tallest at 1,161 feet. But a few years after the South Tower opened, tragedy struck. An 18-year-old fell to his death in 2017 after reportedly slipping while he was taking a selfie on the roof of the skyscraper. This story is disputed though because another account says the young man was on the roof of the skyscraper following a heated argument with his father. For whatever reason, the young man slipped off a helicopter pad on the top floor and fell to his death, landing on a Mercedes that was parked in the outdoor parking lot of the complex. Was it dumb or maybe there was some foul play? Caron Dust It's hard to tell if this death really happened, but the story has survived in many years, so it's up to you to decide. Caron Dust lived during the 5th century BC and was a student of Pythagoras, the Greek philosopher and mathematician. Caron Dust was responsible for developing laws in Catania, Sicily. One of the laws he created strictly forbade bringing weapons into the public assembly. The penalty for this was, of course, death. However, Carondas brought a sword into the assembly following the passage of his own law forbidding this act. I guess he forgot. And according to legend, Carondas took this sword and ended his own life. So, in the end, he was his own judge, jury, and executioner. William Henry Harrison William Henry Harrison was the ninth president of the United States. At the time, he was the oldest elected president and was a signer of the Declaration of Independence. Harrison made a name for himself as a military man during campaigns against Native Americans in Ohio, and he later became governor of the Indiana Territory. He would fight against the Shawnee, who were under the command of Chief and Warrior Tecumseh. This was the 1811 Battle of Tippecanoe in modern-day Indiana. Harrison ran for president in 1840, and his running mate was John Tyler. Their campaign slogan was, Tippecanoe and Tyler too. Harrison then won the election, and his inauguration took place on March 4, 1841. On that day, it was cold and rainy, but Harrison decided not to wear a coat or gloves. He spent at least two hours in the elements unprotected, which turned out to be a poor decision. Harrison developed a cold, which eventually became pneumonia. Harrison then died one month after that fateful decision. John Tyler would take over as President of the United States. William Henry Harrison wasn't just the oldest president for the time, but he ended up having the shortest term of any president in U.S. history. John Eric Hexham John Eric Hexham was an American television star and model during the 1980s. He gained fame in 1982 when he played Phineas Bogg in NBC's time travel series called Voyagers. It lasted one season, but Hexum went on to star in made-for-TV movies and television shows. Hexum even appeared in a 1984 film about legendary college football coach Paul Bear Bryant. His next project was a television show called Cover Up. It was a show about a former Green Beret, but filming for the show was delayed. While on set, Hexum saw a 44 Magnum that was loaded with what he believed were blanks. He made a comment about the delay, pointed the gun to his head, and then pulled the trigger. A 1994 Entertainment Weekly article stated the impact from the blast fractured his skull, driving a bone fragment the size of a quarter into his brain and causing massive hemorrhaging. Sadly, Hexum was just 26 years old at the time of his death. His silly joke turned fatal. Adolf Frederick Adolf Frederick was the king of Sweden from 1751 to 1771. 
He was nothing more than a figurehead during a time of peace. Also, this was a time when the Swedish parliament allowed freedom of information and of the press. While this may be interesting to people who enjoy Swedish history, the death of Adolf Fredrik is absolutely ridiculous. It's said that in one sitting, Adolf Fredrik ate lobster, caviar, kippers, sauerkraut, various meats, and turnips. But why did he indulge in such a feast? It's believed that his last meal occurred before Lent, a Christian observance before Easter where you avoid certain foods. This may have been a Fat Tuesday kind of celebration for the king, and he overdid it. After he completed the meal, he's rumored to have eaten semla for dessert. These are wheat flour buns flavored with cardamom and filled with an almond paste. Adel Frederick is said to have eaten 14 of them with a bowl of hot milk mixed with raisins and cinnamon. Sadly, though, he died not too long after this meal. But what caused his death? It's not exactly clear. He either died of heart failure or poisoning. And sadly, the most memorable thing about King Adolf Frederick was his last meal. John Sedgwick John Sedgwick was a brigadier general for the Union Army during the Civil War. He was wounded three times at the Battle of Antietam in 1862, but he recovered and led his men in battle from 1863 until 1864. At the Battle of Spotsylvania Courthouse in 1864, Sedgwick noticed that his men were taking cover due to Confederate sharpshooters. Then, either in an act of bravery or as an act to ease the worries of his men, Sedgwick said, What? Men dodging this way for single bullets? What will you do when they open fire along the whole line? He would then follow up by saying, They couldn't hit an elephant at this distance. And that's when Sedgwick took a fatal bullet to the face. Henry I of England Henry I ruled England from 1100 to 1135. He was remembered as a decisive but sometimes cruel ruler. And his death is truly bizarre. Henry married Matilda of Scotland and brought peaceful relations between the two countries. His sons died tragically, but his illegitimate sons hoped that their father would consider them heirs to the throne. But he didn't. Henry I died in 1135 due to his wild diet. He was a fan of lamprey, a very crazy, jawless fish with lots of teeth. According to Noah, the sea lamprey is among the most primitive of all vertebrate species. It's a parasitic fish that's native to the western and northern Atlantic Ocean. Due to their body shapes, lampreys are, at times, inaccurately called lamprey eels. Henry decided to eat a bunch of lamprey and he died soon after. Some believe he got a parasite from the lamprey, but others think his death might have been the result of listeria. Remy Lucidi French daredevil Remy Lucidi, aka Remy Enigma, was a 30-year-old Instagram star. According to People magazine, he was an extreme sports enthusiast who documented his feats with stunning photographs on social media. People who followed Lucidi were in awe of his pictures on top of incredibly tall buildings and spires in places like Bulgaria, Thailand, Dubai, and Portugal. In July 2023, he was in Hong Kong visiting the 721-foot-tall Trigunter Tower. He gained access to the tower by telling security he was there to visit a friend on the 40th floor. He didn't stop at the 40th floor, though. He made his way to the 49th floor. Surveillance cameras followed his movements up to the top, where he was able to force his way out through a door. What happened next is a mystery. But somehow, Lucidi lost his footing and fell to his death. Some believe he was practicing one of his extreme sports and may have knocked on a window to one of the penthouses in the building for assistance. But nobody came to his aid. The Ghana Zoo Incident In 2022, a middle-aged man entered the Accra Zoo in Ghana. He climbed into an area for white lions and was mauled to death. Authorities investigating what happened believed the man had a plan to steal the white lion cubs that were at the zoo. The man could have made a lot of money on the black market selling the lion cubs. But in the end, nature had other plans. Thanks for watching. Be sure to stay tuned for extra content you might have missed.
The Fox and the Hunter A hunter in Belarus was out hunting and came across a fox. He wounded the animal and then got closer, maybe to see if he was dead. But when he noticed that it was alive, he tried to use the butt of his gun to finish it off. That's where things went very wrong. Even though it was injured, the fox sprang up and started to scrap with the hunter. The Huffington Post reports that a prosecutor from the Grodno region said the animal fiercely resisted and in the struggle accidentally pulled the trigger with its paw. The cunning fox somehow managed to pull the trigger, shooting the hunter with his own gun in the leg. The hunter ended up in the hospital and the fox escaped. AOL News reports that this isn't the first time this has happened either. Supposedly, there are at least three incidents of dogs and cats unintentionally shooting off guns in the past 10 years. Car Attacked by Dogs A man in Chongqing, China was in for quite a surprise after treating a stray dog badly. After finding the dog sleeping in his favorite parking spot outside his house, the man kicked the dog to rudely get him out of the way before getting back into his car. But the dog wouldn't take the offense lying down. Returning later with a pack of its friends, they proceeded to tear away the car's bodywork, shredding and biting the frame above the tires, and also ripping away the windshield wipers and scratching the paintwork. The attack on the car was an attack on the driver. A stunned neighbor captured the attack on his camera, later sharing the far-fetched story to news sources. If he didn't have the video, nobody would have believed him. Someone has never heard the saying to let sleeping dogs lie. Home to some 130 million dogs, China is no stranger to strays. But with such lax animal rights legislation, animal abuse is just as common. Maybe after seeing this canine's reaction, Chinese residents, and in particular the unlucky man on the receiving end of their revenge, will think twice about harming man's best friend. That's quite an expensive repair job. Who do you think was right here? This dog was not happy about getting kicked out of the parking spot. Do you think the man should be punished? Maybe a fine? Or was the dog in the wrong? Let me know what you think the policy should be in the comments below. Bear gets some payback While hunting in Siberia in 2014, a group of men came across a brown bear. After shooting and wounding the animal, the men thought that they had lost their trophy when the injured bear fled for cover. Returning to their cabin for the night, the men woke the next day to find the car belonging to the hunter who'd shot the bear had been ripped apart. Surprisingly, the cars of the other men were left untouched. Leaving behind its telltale footprints and claw marks in the mud, the animal exacted its violent revenge. Although wounded in the leg, it was still able to get a little payback. After scratching the vehicle, breaking its lights, smashing the windscreen, and ripping open the seats, the bear left as mysteriously as it reappeared, causing thousands of dollars in damage. Let that be a lesson to hunters everywhere. Deer Attack Hunting is still quite common in many places, but cases of nature striking back still take the general public by surprise. This was the case with a man named Randy Goodman, who set out on the second day of firearm season with one thing in mind, to snag himself a deer. Easy peasy. After spotting two doe just after daybreak, Goodman thought he was in for a lucky day. But when a buck moved in beside the two deer, Goodman laid into it, getting off two shots at the buck and putting it down for good or so Goodman thought. After moving in to check on his handiwork, Goodman took the buck by one of its horns, but the hunter was in store for a big surprise. While surveying his so-called kill, Goodman was knocked on his backside by the deer who had simply been playing possum. Striking the hunter with its antlers, the animal was still alive and spent the next few moments trying to fight its way past Goodman. Managing to get some 30 yards from his potential killer, the buck fell down, obviously injured. In that time, Goodman managed to get back up, retrieve his gun, and with two more shots, he finally put the buck down completely. But that isn't the end of the story. Starting to feel woozy, Goodman noticed his face felt warm. After inspecting his face and seeing that his jacket was soaked in blood, the hunter was able to get to his truck and drive out of the middle of nowhere and get himself to the hospital. The buck had managed to land a strong hit to his head. After receiving seven staples on the left side of his scalp, Doctors told Goodman he had suffered a light concussion and that his right arm and chest were bruised. It just goes to show you that even seasoned hunters like Goodman, who had been hunting since the late 1970s, might want to be a little more careful when moving in to celebrate their kill, especially if they're alone. Never know what might happen out there in the woods.
A Tiger's Revenge The tiger has earned the nickname of being a man-eater, even though they are mostly solitary and elusive animals. But every now and then, a story comes out of a terrifying beast out for human blood. This man would learn that there is some truth to the legend. In 1997, a Russian poacher named Vladimir Markov ran into an Amur tiger, or a Siberian tiger, while out hunting. Known to weigh over 500 pounds, some Siberian tigers can be more than 10 feet long from nose to tail. Able to jump as far as 25 feet, these are not animals you want to mess with. But for Markov, spotting the tiger's prince was too good of an opportunity to pass up. After tracking the tiger down, Markov shot the tiger. To add insult to injury, he also stole part of the tiger's kill and for some reason left. But the tiger, merely wounded, had another plan in mind for the notorious poacher. In what some say was a premeditated stalking, the tiger was able to not only find and stake out Markov's cabin, it also systematically destroyed anything that had Markov's scent on it, later waiting between 12 and 48 hours by the front door for its attacker to come back home. This big cat was quite clever. When Markov returned, the tiger had no mercy, killing the man, dragging him into the bush and eating him, leaving only his head behind. It's hard to say how much of this story is true, but those who reportedly found Markov said that it was clear a man-eating tiger had done this. And piecing together the evidence showed just how dedicated this tiger was to getting revenge. Elephant Trampoline The old adage about how an elephant never forgets is never more apt than when one of their fellow pachyderms dies, even more so when their death is the result of a speeding train. In 2013, when an unlucky elephant was killed by an express train in Delhi, India, its herd did not take the tragic death very well. In fact, they grieved in a way only an elephant can, by going on a rampage in a nearby village. The herd of about 15 elephants initially hung around the spot where their fellow elephant was killed. When locals tried to chase them away by lighting firecrackers, the herd dispersed, but they weren't finished. In fact, they returned to the spot where their herdmate died a few nights later. Again, residents tried to scare them off by beating drums, but the elephants refused to leave and ended up going on a rampage, destroying several houses. A specialist was brought in to drive the herd out of the area, but it was all for nothing. They came back even more riled up than before, damaging more homes and demolishing part of a schoolhouse. Their behavior is not uncommon, with herds often covering the bodies of their dead friends with bushes and small tree branches. But perhaps it is the violent way in which this particular elephant died that affected its herd so deeply. Elephant deaths by train are not a rare occurrence in India, with at least 50 elephants killed since 2010 across the country's rail network. Luckily, authorities made an effort to warn engineers to slow down and be more careful to protect these animals and by default nearby villages in the future. Dive Bombing Crows Did you know that a group of crows is called a murder? It comes from old folk tales and superstitions, but it might make more sense when you get to know a little about their behavior. For the most part, crows are not dangerous, but they do have a habit of remembering those who do them wrong. For five years, researchers in Seattle conducted a study on local crows to prove that not only are the birds intelligent, but that they have a knack for remembering the faces of those who have harmed them in some way. Known to dive bomb people who they think are getting too close to their nests, crows have also been found to hold a grudge. The research team from the University of Washington set out to prove just how the crows react to those they feel are too close for comfort. After taking up the task of trapping and banding birds for research, Professor of Wildlife Science John Marsleff observed mobs of angry birds flying overhead and scolded them. When his team returned to the area sometime later, the birds instantly recognized them and continued to express their concern in their signature caw. Launching a five-year study on just how much information crows retain, the group wore different masks when trapping the birds to see if they were responding to their faces or some tool they were using while working in the field. The birds quickly learned that the researcher in a mask was bad news, mobbing or attacking them. But it wasn't only reduced to the crows that had been trapped. Over time, more and more crows joined in the chorus, scolding the mask wearer in larger numbers each time. Even baby birds got in on the action. After seeing their parents scold the mask wearers, the babies continued to scold even when their parents weren't around. There are countless stories of crows dive bombing the unsuspecting public, so much that dive bomb season is a thing in cities like Seattle and Vancouver, 
strafing passersby and causing scalp wounds. Luckily, most of the time, the wounds are superficial and a result of young birds learning to fly and their overprotective parents looking out for them. That being said, you might want to keep a watchful eye in the skies during fledgling season. And remember that a crow will remember you, so be careful what you do to it. Lions take down poachers It is a sad fact that in South Africa, poachers still exist, but sometimes the animals gain the upper hand. In 2018, when a man named David Baloyi set off with two other armed men from Mozambique to a game reserve in Limpopo, they decided to go hunting in the dead of night. Armed with two rifles, the big cat hunter may have thought his choice was a stealthy one, but the big cats proved they were far better hunters and ended up attacking the men from the bush. Mauled by several lions, Baloyi's screams scared off his hunting partners who fled, leaving behind their fully loaded rifles. After devouring most of Beloye's body, the lions left behind his head, which local police used to identify him. Even though the two other illegal poachers made it back safely to Mozambique, they had the grim task of informing Beloye's family of the ordeal. With illegal poaching a major problem in Africa in general, the animals are often hunted down and mutilated for sale, and sometimes their parts are used in traditional medicine. Poachers will often cut the fences of wildlife preserves to gain access to the protected animals. But this time, it seems the lions were the hunters instead of the hunted. Hopefully, poachers will eventually learn not to mess with the kings of the jungle. Elephant Crushes Hunter The thing about hunting big game is the animals are often dangerous, and not only while during the hunt. While leading a group of hunters near the Huangue National Park, professional big game hunter Theonis Botha was crushed. The elephant they had been tracking picked him up with his trunk and then fell on him. Before the incident, Botha and his group had come across a herd of breeding elephants. Three of the animals charged the group, but a fourth, who caught them by surprise, grabbed Botha up with her trunk. When one of the other hunters shot the elephant, she collapsed on top of Botha. Both the elephant and Botha were killed. The park is no stranger to controversy. It is the same game preserve where Cecil the lion was shot dead by an American hunter in 2015. And Botha is not the only hunter to meet such a violent demise. His friend, Scott Van Zyl, was attacked and killed by a crocodile in Zimbabwe in 2017. As you know, nature is tough, even if you have guns. Buffalo Gores Hunter As trophy hunters continue to push the boundaries, it only makes sense that the animals would start to strike back. After killing a buffalo and loading its carcass onto his vehicle, hunter Claude Kleinhans ended up getting a little bit of a punishment when another buffalo charged at him. After 30 years of killing animals in South Africa, nature turned the tables on him. After leading a group near the Levubu River, Klein Hans was busy picking up the heavy dead water buffalo and got distracted. But another buffalo from the same herd wanted vengeance, and after charging the hunter, ended up goring him with his horn. Hitting the femoral artery in Klein Hans' thigh, the wound was too severe, killing the hunter almost instantly. Although he knew the bush well and was well-versed in both conversation and trophy hunting, as his friends say, it turns out that Klein Hans' trek would send him to the grave. Thanks for watching! Be sure to stay tuned for extra content you might have missed! Akbar Salubiro Akbar Salubiro was an ordinary 25-year-old heading to his job at a palm oil plantation one day in 2017, but he never came home. He lives in a remote village on the Indonesian island of Sulawesi, and Salubiro's family grew more and more concerned as they waited for him. Two days after he vanished, they finally called the police. Meanwhile, a search party went out to look for the missing young man. Later that day, people noticed an extremely bloated reticulated python in Salubiro's backyard, struggling to move. In a horrifying discovery that was captured on camera, residents cut the reptile's stomach open and found their missing friend. The snake had suffocated Salubiro and swallowed him whole. His death is the first documented case of a reticulated python killing and eating an adult human. Surprisingly, nearby villagers had overheard a man's panicked screams the night Salubiro disappeared, but nobody responded to his pleas. They must have thought he was screaming just for fun, or maybe he was drunk, partying. They definitely did not expect him to get eaten by a giant snake, because those kinds of things just don't happen, right? Well, as you're about to see, they kind of do. Rock Python Eats Boy One day back in 2002, a 20-foot-long rock python made its way into a clearing between some mango trees where kids were playing and gathering fruit. 
It set its sights on a 10-year-old boy and began wrapping itself around him, pinning his arms to his side. Meanwhile, the victim's terrified classmates scrambled up into the trees and looked on in horror. According to the Sydney Morning Herald, the snake squeezed harder and harder until it consumed the boy whole. The other children were too afraid to move and remained in hiding until the snake disappeared. One of the children, who was just 11 years old at the time, told police what happened and he showed them where the snake had slithered off. He said his friend had been gathering fruit when he was grabbed by the snake, who quickly wrapped himself around him, and everything happened so fast that he didn't even scream or cry out. The boy told police that the snake's mouth opened very, very wide and started to swallow him from the head down his clothes and everything. It all took about three hours because it was dark when we saw it slither away and we finally came down from the tree. The reptile then slithered off to a nearby stream, leaving no trace of its victim behind. Local snake expert Craig Smith said that the snake had probably recently come out of hibernation and was extremely hungry when the boy wandered in front of him. Locals searched for days on end, but African rock pythons are a protected species in South Africa, and so if they did find it, they were supposed to report it to experts. There are no news updates saying that the snake was ever found. The first recorded instance of an African rock python eating a person happened in 1951, when a newspaper in Uganda reported that a snake killed and swallowed a 13-year-old boy but then regurgitated him. Then, in 1973, a Portuguese soldier vanished while on guard duty, according to a newspaper in Mozambique. His body was reportedly extracted from a large python. Zookeeper for dinner A student zookeeper made a fatal mistake in 2008 by letting a Burmese python out of its enclosure at the Caracas Zoo in Venezuela. Biology student Eric Arrieta was working the night shift alone when he decided to break the zoo's rules and free the serpent, which had only been at the zoo for two months. The 10-foot-long snake bit the 29-year-old's hand, grabbed onto him, and crushed him to death. It was too late to save Arrieta by the time employees discovered the python with his head in its mouth. They beat the reptile until it released its grip on his remains. Only Arrieta knew why he opened the snake's cage, and he took his reasons to the grave. But he clearly underestimated the creature's strength. What do you think he was doing? Why did he let out the snake? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Python versus Plantation Worker Back in 1995, a 29-year-old rubber plantation worker named Yi Heng Chuan went outside at night to turn off a water pump at his home in Tainang. He was attacked by a python, and yelling got the attention of his brother who called the police. By the time they arrived, the man was dead. The snake had already started swallowing him. Police shot and killed the massive reptile. Measuring 23 feet long, it was the longest python ever seen in Malaysia, according to zoologist Q. Bong Heng, who spoke with the Associated Press. He said it was the first time a python had attacked a human in Malaysia, which means it was also the first time a python tried to swallow a person in the country. District police chief told the news agency that the python was thick, measuring 10 inches in diameter and weighing 308 pounds. Sadly, a human is no match for a snake of this size. By the time the victim crossed paths with it, he was pretty much doomed. A close call An Australian woman named Leah Ann Mears received an alarming warning in 2014 when a scientist named Daniel Natush told her that a dangerous snake had come near her home on the Cape York Peninsula. Natush and his colleagues had recently put a tracking device on the 12-foot-long Australian scrub python but they couldn't remove it from the area because it was hiding beneath a shipping container. While the species is not considered a threat to adults, it's known to go after young children and pets. Concerned about Leah Ann's kids, who were one and three years old at the time, Natush advised her to keep her windows and doors shut. Just days later, during a heat wave, Mears cracked her screen door open for some air. She closed it before going to bed, not realizing that the snake had taken advantage and slithered into the house. In the early hours of the morning, it made its way into Leah Ann's bed, bit her, and began coiling itself around her leg. Leah Ann awoke to the snake latched onto her body with its teeth sunken into her. She was able to push her hand inside the reptile's mouth and force it open to free herself from the bite. Thankfully, she managed to uncoil the python without any serious injuries, 
but she almost got swallowed whole and survived to tell the tale. A year later, the snake returned to Leah Ann's house and attacked her dog, who lost consciousness but survived. The researchers who had warned the family explained in a study that even though the snake tried to eat its victims, it would have never succeeded because it was too small. I don't know about you, but that's not really that comforting. I think Leah Ann might want to consider moving. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Wa Tiba When a 54-year-old Indonesian woman named Wa Tiba went outside to check on her garden, she probably didn't think she was in danger. After all, it was something the Southeast Sulawesi resident did all the time. But she disappeared one day in 2018, and frantic locals mounted a huge search for their missing neighbor. The next day, they found Watiba's sandals and machete. Laying less than 100 feet away was a massive bloated python. Suspecting that the snake had swallowed Watiba, residents killed the 23-foot-long reptile and cut open its stomach. Their worst fears were realized when they found the woman's body inside. The python had swallowed her whole. While it's rare for snakes to kill and eat humans, this was the second time it had happened in Indonesia in just over a year. Are they learning? Are they getting an acquired taste? Or are they just so large that a human is no problem to swallow? This whole situation is quite scary to say the least. Eaten Alive in late 2014, the Discovery Channel began airing previews for a documentary called Eaten Alive, promising viewers that they would get to see a man enter the belly of an anaconda. That man is naturalist Paul Rosalie, and his plan was to let a snake swallow him up to his waist. He put on a special suit and helmet, covered himself in pig's blood, and antagonized an 18-foot-long anaconda until she attacked him. The snake tried to swallow Rosalie's head and coiled herself around his body for over an hour. She had him pinned face down in the mud under her crushing weight, and he progressively grew weaker. Rosalie's heart rate began to slow down, and he felt his arm being crushed. Knowing he would be seriously injured if the encounter continued, he called for rescue. Viewers felt deceived by the show's promotions, and animal rights activists accused its creators of cruelty against the snake. Paul and the Discovery Channel claimed that they made the special to raise awareness about endangered wildlife in the Amazon, but many people did not see this as an excuse to provoke a wild animal. Meanwhile, Paul reportedly suffered minor injuries, but told Entertainment Weekly that it took him months to recover from the ordeal. What do you think about this whole thing? Did you see the episode? Let me know in the comments below. New Brunswick Python Attack in 2013, two little boys named Noah and Connor Barth went to a sleepover at their friend's apartment in New Brunswick, Canada. At some point during the night, a large African rock python escaped from its cage and entered an air duct. The vent collapsed under the 14-foot-long, 100-pound creature's weight, and the snake fell directly onto the four- and six-year-old brothers. The scene found by the friend's father, Jean-Claude Savoie, was something right out of a horror movie. He called the police and tried to save the boys, but there was blood and bite marks everywhere. By the time they arrived, it was too late. An autopsy showed that the boys died from asphyxiation, and Savoie was charged with criminal negligence. Constable Stefan Duga, who had reported to the scene, testified that the snake made growling noises and lunged at the glass of its enclosure after Savoie returned it to its cage. The reptile was clearly agitated leaving one to wonder if it might have eaten the boys given the chance. Prosecutors claimed that the rock python had a history of escaping and aggressive behavior, and Savoie did not have a proper license to own it. They accused him of failing to take proper precautions to prevent a tragedy from happening. The allegations went even deeper when the possibility of foul play was brought up. Experts testified that it was rare for a rock python to act so aggressively, and that these creatures don't just go on killing sprees for no reason. Savoie's lawyer argued that the man thought his pet python was too large to fit into the air duct and therefore saw no reason to secure it, even though it was accessible from the snake's cage. Speaking with CBS News, snake expert John Kendrick explained that a startled python will grab onto anything nearby for stability, and that in this case, it might have been the boys that it landed on. Savoie was ultimately found innocent, but that still won't bring the boys back. Toilet Attack While using the toilet at his home east of Bangkok, Thailand in 2016, 
A man named Ataporn Boonmukchuai felt something jump up and bite him in the most intimate of areas. A 10-foot-long python had slithered its way through the plumbing and clamped its jaws down on his nether region. The unfortunate victim spent a half hour trying to get the snake to release its grip. Finally, with help from his wife and neighbor, he pried the serpent's jaws open, freed himself, and then fainted. Emergency responders found the bathroom covered in blood. The snake was removed from the toilet and released back into the wild. Meanwhile, Ataporn was taken to the hospital, where doctors told him he would recover. He was happy enough about this to smile while giving interviews from his hospital bed. The hospital director commended the man's positive attitude, even though his wife and children were shocked. Knowing he was going to emerge from the incident with his privates intact was enough to make the man smile. A Truck Driver in Peril A Zambian truck driver named Kelvin Katoka told the press that he was lucky to be alive after a python attacked him on the job in 2013. Katoka didn't notice the snake in his vehicle before it attacked him out of nowhere while he was driving at a copper mine. The python lunged at the unsuspecting man and began coiling itself around his body, according to Katoka, who spoke with AFP from his hospital bed. A lengthy struggle ensued, and Katoka did everything he could to get the snake off of him. He even bit the python before taking a knife out of his pocket and stabbing it several times. The snake began to loosen itself, but soon enough, it once again tightened its grip on the man. Katoka began vomiting blood and fainted. Two of his co-workers discovered the horrifying scene and managed to kill the snake. They took Katoka to the hospital, where he spent over a month recovering. If it hadn't been for his quick-thinking colleagues, he may have become the creature's next meal. Anaconda Death Grip An eight-year-old boy named Mateus came terrifyingly close to death while playing near a creek outside his grandfather's ranch in Cosmorama, Brazil in 2007. An anaconda bit the boy and dragged him to the ground and began wrapping itself around him. Mateo started to suffocate, and his friends rushed for help. The boy's 66-year-old grandfather, Joaquim Pereira, beat the snake with rocks and stabbed it with a knife in a desperate attempt to save the boy's life. It took the man a half hour to uncoil the anaconda from Mateus' body. Thankfully, Pereira acted in the nick of time, and Mateo survived with 21 stitches to his chest. Anacondas and pythons rarely attack humans, but they can easily kill one within minutes. These unforgiving reptiles are known to target pets and small children more often than they go after adults. In 2016, an Australian mother named Tamara Thurgood awoke to find a python coiled around her six-year-old son, Tyler's stomach. The snake had already bitten the little boy in the face several times when Thurgood began fighting to free him. Two other family members came and managed to kill the python. Miraculously, Tyler did not recall being bitten by the snake, and he had his eyes closed during the attack. Not only did she discover the encounter in time to save Tyler's life, but he was evidently spared from the trauma of remembering the horrifying ordeal. Thanks for watching. Be sure to stay tuned for extra content you might have missed. Poacher versus Elephant In South Africa, a poacher came up against the wrath of an elephant. It happened at the famous Kruger National Park, with the trampled body of the poacher being uncovered during an operation meant to prevent poaching. This is according to the spokesman for the park, Isaac Fala. The official investigation revealed that the poacher had likely snuck into the park with the intention of hunting down some elephants and stealing their ivory. But before the poacher ever had a chance to kill anything, the elephant ambushed him, knocked him over with its huge trunk, and then stomped on him. Luckily for the anti-poaching unit, the elephant spared the poacher's cell phone. Rangers turned the phone over to police, who can hopefully use it to track down other poachers. If you thought this was the only bloody attack by an elephant recently, you'd be wrong. Just earlier this year, a different poacher was also trampled and killed when a herd of elephants saw him coming and charged. Obviously, elephants are smart and seem to be understanding who is coming after them with guns and bad intentions. They are starting to fight back with deadly consequences. In 2019, yet another poacher who was hunting rhinos got stomped to death by an elephant. Then his body was eaten by lions. Tough times for the illegal hunting business. Alligator vs. Kayaker In North Carolina, an angry alligator rammed into a kayak, flipped the man into the river, and nearly ate him. The kayaker had been enjoying a perfectly calm and peaceful day on the Waccamaw River. His name is Peter Joyce, an outdoor enthusiast. He was paddling up the river when about 20 feet to his left, a large shape appeared. 
Seconds later, it was a whole lot closer, and it had its mouth open. Peter had no idea what to do. It didn't matter anyway because he didn't have enough time to think. He was suddenly in the water, flailing around, and the alligator was just inches away. Luckily, Peter did know how to kayak. He flipped himself upright and then sat frozen while waiting for this second attack to come, ready to fight the beast off with his paddle, but it never did attack again. Luckily, the alligator just seemed like it wanted to investigate and decided the kayak was not tasty. Peter paddled away as quickly as he could and received no other overly friendly welcomes from bull gators in the Blackwater River that day. Man vs. Tiger In Nepal, an elderly man got into a fight with a tiger and lost. The tragedy unfolded at the Chitwan National Park when Bawona Chadhari went out to cut the grass. He would often go out to the same area to collect grass for the elephants living at the park. But this time, when the man arrived, the tiger was already there. It had just killed an antelope and was in the middle of eating its prey when Bawona arrived. He must have surprised and scared the tiger, so it turned on him and attacked and killed the unfortunate man. To make matters worse, two days before Bawona Chadhari was killed, another man was murdered by a tiger in the same area. He too had gone into the jungle to cut grass when he accidentally stumbled upon a tiger and was ripped to shreds. Officials said that this time the case was a bit different because it was an older tiger. According to the information officer with the Chitwan National Park, these attacks are fairly common. In 2018 and 2019, there were a total of three deaths caused by tiger attacks. The park says it's usually old or sick tigers who start attacking humans, since we're so much easier to hunt. With the increasing tiger population, there has been a rise in the sighting of tigers, and they have been straying into nearby settlements and attacking locals. Bear in the Kitchen At Lake Tahoe, a woman just about got killed by a rampaging bear in her own kitchen. Her name is Laurel Rose von Hoffman Kersey. She's 66 years old. She told local news that the bear first started roaming around her property in Tahoe Vista. She was at her vacation home at 6 in the morning when she was rudely awoken to banging and clattering in the kitchen. When she went to investigate, wondering just who in the world would have entered her home, she found herself face to face with a bear. I don't know if it would be scarier to find a bear or a person who broke in. Which would you prefer? The bear had the refrigerator open and was scrounging for food. Since the woman snuck up on the bear, it turned and attacked. She said it came straight at her with its great paw filling her vision. Everything went dark. She could feel immense pain, could hear the growling of the bear, and then it was over. Laurel Rose sustained serious injuries, with her face all cut up and her neck bleeding profusely. The bear must have thought she was dead by the time it stopped its attack, which is probably the only reason she's still alive today. She had to spend a bit of time in the hospital and got a lot of stitches thanks to all the puncture wounds, but miraculously, she survived. What would you do if you were confronted with a dangerous wild animal in your home? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. We have lots more videos coming up. Crocodile vs. Fisherman In Australia, rangers at the Kakadu National Park were scouring the dangerous waterways for a deadly crocodile responsible for brutally attacking a group of fishermen. Among the group, a 32-year-old resident of New South Wales found himself in the jaws of this crocodile which had jumped straight from the water and into the fisherman's boat. Rangers believe what may have caused the attack was the fisherman's choice of dining location. The group had stopped on the river, still inside their boat, to cook a bit of dinner on board. The crocodile must have smelled what they were cooking and came to get some for itself. But instead of a bite of fish, the crocodile took a bite out of one of the fishermen. In this case, the guy was lucky to walk away with only minor injuries. His friends all acted in time to push the huge croc off the boat and back into the water. They estimated it at being at least 12 feet long. And if you're wondering how such a large beast launched itself out of the water and into a boat, crocodile expert Adam Britton has the answer. He says that crocodiles are able to push themselves out of the water only if they have something to rest themselves against, like the hull of a boat. They use their powerful tails to propel up, sliding along the edge of the boat, and the result is an exploding crocodile. Last we heard, this particular crocodile is still at large. Snake in a Suitcase Maria Boxel found a snake in her luggage after flying home from a holiday in Australia. When she opened her bag and looked, she at first thought the serpent had been put there by one of her family members as a joke. But when the Scottish grandmother touched the snake and it moved, she realized it was no joke. 
She had accidentally carried a reptile all the way from Queensland to Glasgow in her suitcase. The snake had even gotten into one of her shoes and shed its skin. Somehow, the authorities at the airport had missed a living creature inside her luggage. It really makes you wonder what they're even looking for with those x-ray machines. Being a woman from Scotland, a place with almost no snakes aside from the generally timid adder, Maria was not too impressed when she discovered the Australian stowaway in her suitcase. Plus, she was well aware that Australia is home to the deadliest serpents on the planet. It wouldn't have been a big surprise if the snake was highly venomous. Maria called the SPCA to take care of the situation. In the meantime, she phoned a relative to come get the snake out of her house before it killed her. Thankfully, SPCA officers were able to determine that the snake was only a python, not dangerous at all. But still, what a terrifying experience for Maria. She's lucky the snake wasn't venomous, but she's also lucky she didn't have a heart attack. Have you ever had a snake in your house? What did you do? Let me know in the comments below. Attack of the Bobcat in North Carolina, a man was almost killed by a bobcat. It happened on June 4th, when Scott Jackson was viciously attacked just outside his home in Eastwood. He and his wife had just pulled up to their house with some groceries. His wife walked inside, but Scott stayed outside because he noticed his chickens were acting strangely, clucking and running around. That was when he heard the growl coming from beneath his car. He bent down to look, and sure enough, there was the wildcat. As soon as they made eye contact, without hesitation, the cat jumped on Scott and knocked him to the ground. What happened next was overwhelming and confusing, but Scott knew he was in serious trouble. The bobcat took to his back and started attacking, and Scott only escaped because he managed to grab hold of the bobcat's paw and twist, forcing it to retreat. Scott then ran inside, locked the door, and called the police. When the police showed up, the animal was already gone. They said it was just one of those things that happens when you live close to wildlife. The wildcat was just doing its thing, trying to survive out in the wild. Hiker vs. Moose In Colorado, a hiker got into a bit of a scuffle with a moose, which given the size of these animals alone is always terrifying. Colorado Parks and Wildlife released video footage captured by the hiker of the incident. The individual had come upon the moose in the wild completely by accident. Naturally, the curious man wanted to film the animal as it grazed on some leaves. Who doesn't want to see a moose? It was a peaceful moment that the hiker would never forget, but the tranquility quickly turned to terror when the moose turned, noticed the man, and tried to run him down like a runaway locomotive. Within just seconds, the bull moose had completely switched from calm to hostile. The hiker only realized what was happening in the nick of time. He was able to jump out of the way as if avoiding a speeding car. He ducked behind a tree for cover and the moose smacked into the tree instead of the hiker. This seemed to put it off its attack. Disgruntled, the moose turned and wandered off. If you're wondering just how dangerous a moose can really be, the answer is very dangerous. Moose can grow to be over 6 feet tall at the shoulder and over 1,000 pounds. There are at least 2,500 wild moose running through the state of Colorado and any one of them can kill a person. Attacks are rare, but a fully grown moose charging at a person and hitting them square in the chest could cause fatal injuries. Grizzly SOS In Alaska, a man spent days being terrorized by a rogue grizzly bear. The only reason that he escaped was that the Coast Guard saw his SOS. The terrifying ordeal happened near a mining camp about 40 miles from the town of Nome. This is about as far north as you can get in Alaska. The man was attacked by the bear the first time and dragged down to the river, but he scared the beast off by firing his pistol. The man thought that was the end of it, but the bear just kept coming back. It even lingered outside the camp waiting for the miner to leave so it could strike. He kept it at bay with bullets, but after a few days, he was running out of ammunition. According to Lieutenant Commander Jared Carbajal, a Coast Guard helicopter just so happened to fly over the camp when they saw the SOS signal written on the tin roof of a shack. The door to the shack had been ripped clean off. Clearly, someone was in trouble. That was when they saw the man on his knees, flailing his arms in distress. The Coast Guard finally managed to rescue the man from the bear. He only had two bullets left at the time and had not slept in days. The bear ran away at the sound of the helicopter and has not been seen since. And the truth is that if you live in Alaska, this is one of the things you can expect to happen if you go into the wilderness. According to Alaskan health officials, at least 68 people were hospitalized from bear attacks between 2000 and 2017, with 10 fatalities. Teens vs. Coyote 
It was about 8 o'clock p.m. on a Monday when two teenagers were lying on a blanket and eating some food. They were on a beach in Massachusetts. The night was cool and the coyotes were on the prowl. Officials in Massachusetts frequently warn people not to feed coyotes, especially not when you're having a picnic on the beach. The reason is that sometimes the coyotes will attack, and that's exactly what this pair of teenagers learned that day. As they ate their food on the beach and relaxed, a coyote came out of nowhere and bit one of the teens on their ankle. It wasn't a deadly attack, but it was certainly scary. The teenagers were so afraid by the coyote and its lingering friends that they dropped their stuff and ran off into the sand to escape. The coyote, having successfully scared them off, then ate the rest of their food before returning to the wild. Attacks of this nature have been getting worse recently because of beachgoers willingly feeding the coyotes, or at least leaving food for them on the beach. With coyotes getting a little more comfortable with humans, more and more people are getting bitten. This includes a three-year-old girl who got chomped by a coyote at the North Herring Cove Beach just two months before this latest incident. Thanks for watching! What's the scariest animal encounter you've ever had? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. See you next time. Bye.